Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth module of Verilog HDL Crash Course. In this module, we are going to cover Verilog HDL operators. So let's get started. So let's discuss the first type of operators, which are arithmetic operators. So arithmetic operators performs arithmetic operations on operands. So here I will tell you one another term as well. So we have the operator term and another is operands. So operands are nothing but the entity on which the operation has to be performed. For example, a addition operation. If you take this example here, C equal to A plus B. So plus is nothing but a arithmetic oper operator and A and B are nothing but operands. So the plus and minus can also be used as unary operator and they can also be used as a binary operator. So binary operator means there are two operands and unary means there is a single operands on which the operation has to be performed. So there are addition operator, subtraction operator, multiplication operator, division operator and modulus operator. These are nothing but called arithmetic operators. So now let's see the second type of operator which is relational operator. So as by name itself, it is clear that it describes some kind of relationship between more than one operands and typically two operands. So relational operators compare two operands and return a single bit value, which is nothing but true or false. So that relationship defined by the relationship operator is true or false. And when we synthesize the design, all the operators which are kind of relational operator in our design which will result in a comparator circuit and wire and register variables are always positive so if you see here when we have to define the relationship between 3 tick b001 and 3 tick b110 so since 3 tick b1001 is a negative value we have to take a two complement of this and hence 3 tick b001 here will become more than 3 tick b110 this will happen when this value is declared as a wire or a register type and in the case of integer data type if the two values are declared as an integer data type then here the relation between minus 1 and 6 will be 6 will be greater than minus 1. So we have to notice here that depending on the data type of variables, the result may vary. Now let's see examples of relational operators. So this operator is nothing but less than operator. Then we have a less than and equal to operator. This is the greater than operator. This is nothing but greater than and equal to. Then we have equal that means the left side and right side are equal or not and then we have a not equal to symbol we also have one another operator which is nothing but three times equal to equal to equal to which indicates that all the values in the two operands are going to be same including unknown value and high impedance value so if you take example of this and if there is any unknown value or high impedance value in any of the operands the output of this operation will be unknown but in case of three time of equal signal equal symbol the comparison will also happen with respect to unknown value or a high impedance value that is x and g so i hope this is clear so if you see an example here if x equal to y e is 1 else e is 0 and the equivalent statement can also be written like this the assignment of e equal to x equal to equal to y that means if x equal to equal to is y if this this is true then e will get a value 1 otherwise e will get a value 0 so this is how we can make use of relational operator in our very log scale code now the third type of operator is bitwise operator so as by name itself it is clear that this operator performs operation bit by bit so the example of this type of operators are bitwise not operator bitwise and bitwise or operator bitwise xor operator operator and bitwise xnor operator so this is a module here and here we are making use of a and type of operator so if 
a is equal to if we say a is equal to 110 and b is equal to 001 then what will be the value of c c will be nothing but bitwise and operation of a and b that means 000 so c will be 000 now let's see the fourth type of operator which is nothing but logical operator so here you have to be very careful in bitwise operator and logical operator and uh, because many times it creates a confusion whether we should use a bitwise or a logical operator the logical operator basically return a single bit one or zero that means true or false they are the same as bitwise or bitwise operators if the operands are single bit variable so if our operands are single bit then there is no difference between bitwise operator and a logical operator and logical operators can work on expressions integers or group of bits and treat all values that are non zero as one logical operators are typically used in conditional statements since they work with expressions we we will try to understand it through uh, one example so if you see this is our logical note operator it is represented as like like this and logical and is represented as this and logical or is represented as this so this is the representation of logical operators so let's take an example so if we have here 8 bit x y and z three variables and the condition here is if x equal to y that means x value of x is equal to value of y and this is nothing but logical and operator and g so what is the value of g if all 8 bits in g is 000 then g will return a value then the value of this variable will be zero otherwise always it is going to be a non zero value so this logical operator here tells that this condition or this condition if they both are true then it will return a true value that means this if statement will execute and a will get a value one otherwise a will get note of x so this note is again a logical note operator so what will be the value of x so here x is an 8 bit value because logical operator will always return either a 0 or a 1 so here note of x this is a logical note and x so what will it return if all suppose all the bits in x is 0 0 0 that means note of x is always going to be 1 and if any of the bit in x is non zero that means note of x logical note of x will be zero so i hope this is clear now the next type of operator is reduction operator so reduction operator operates on all the bits of an offering vector and return a single bit value it also returns a single bit value and the important point here is the reduction operator operates on a single operand. So, how will we represent the reduction operator? The reduction and is represented at like this. This is same as a bitwise and operator. But how it is used in our design will determine whether it is a bitwise and operator or a re reduction operator. So, the reduction or is nothing but like this. Then we have reduction nand, reduction nor reduction axor and reduction axnor so let's see one example here here we have a design and here assign z equal to not of or a how we are going to determine the result of this expression so suppose a is here 110 what is so this is a single offering this is a single offering so and this or operation and then and operation is basically getting applied to a single operand so it will basically become a reduction operator so what will be like with the or of a or of a will be one this is nothing but or operation between all the bits and then not of or of a it will become zero so this is how this operator works the reduction operator hope this is clear now the next type of operator is shift operator so the shift operator shift the first operand by the number of bits specified by the second operand remember this 
the first operand, operand will be getting shifted by the number of bits specified by the second operand. And here, vacated positions are filled with zeros for both left and right shifts. So, this, how, how we will represent the left shift and right shift operator? This is how we will represent the left and uh, right shift operator. So, let's see one example here. Assign C equal to A. This is left, left shifted by 2. A equal to 1, 1, 1. So, what will be the left shifted of A? Left shifted of A will be 1, 0. Now, let's see the next type of operator which is concatenation operator. This is very important operator. And it combines basically two or more operands to form a larger vector. So, let's see. So, so this is how the concatenation operator is represented. And let's see it by using an example. So here we have two variables a and b, then we have a x variable, then we have y and z variable of uh, 4 bit and then we have a count to a 3 bit variable. So if you see assign x, x is a 3 bit variable. So we want to basically assign a variable to x and whatever vacate position and whatever the extra position will be in x that we want to fill with 0. So how we can do it? We can do it by using by making use of concatenation operator. So here is a. So whatever it is in the left side, so in the right side, this will this will basically start from LSB. So a the, uh, the a is a two bit variable. So the zeroth or first bit will be nothing but the LSB. This is LSB plus one, and the third bit x is a three bit value, and the third third bit in the x will be zero. So this is how it will get assigned the values where x0 will be a0, x1 will be a1 and x2 will be g. Now let's see one another example. Here assign y equal to a and b. So y if you see here is a 4 bit variable and a and b are 2 bit variable. So lsb of y, lsb of y is nothing but b, uh, lsb of b. So y0 will be b0, y1 will be b1 y2 will be a0 here and y3 will be a1 here and next important use of concatenation operator is assign values to multiple variables using a single statement so here using the sign statement we can assign the values to count as well as y using a single statement by making use of concatenation operator so here if you see count and y so y is 4 bit value and then count is 3 bit value so this is 7 bit value so x plus z whatever the value of x plus z will be extended to 7 bit and bit 0 to 3 will be get assigned to y and uh, 4 to 7 will get assigned to count so this is how we can assign multiple variables using a single statement now let's see the next type of operator which is replication operator and it is very important. So the replication operator actually maps multiple copies of an item. The syntax is n and item. So this is item and this is n copy of that item. So whatever its value is here, it will get copied n times. So this is how the replication operator work. Let's now see through an example. So here we have a y data type variable a and b and x y and z so here assign x four times zero and then a so let's understand it by one simple example if we have a wire x and we have to assign a value zero so this wire of x is basically four bit wire so if if you have to assign all the values or all the bits in x as 0, we can assign 4 tick b 0, 0, 0, 0. But let's assume that we have a 1000 bit wide variable. And we want to assign all the bits of that variable to 0. So how we can do that? So this is where replication operator is very useful. And if you see here, let's see this example. So in this example, what we are doing is G is a 6 bit variable and all the 6 bit variable will get assigned a value of 1. 
so the replication operator is very useful when we have to initialize something it, when basically we have to initialize a very uh, big vector with some constant value so in that particular case our replication operator becomes very useful so if you see here this is also a replication this is also example of replication operator where two times a will be copied and then b so if you see here b and then two times of a will be assigned to y so this is how the replication operator works now let's see a very important operator which is nothing but conditional operator so this is similar to what we have in our c c++ and they evaluate to one of the two expressions based on a condition and when, wherever there is a conditional operator used in our design it will always synthesize to a multiplexer and it is also called a ternary operator because it operates on three operands now let's see the syntax of conditional operator so here we have a condition and now we have this operator and this is the next statement is nothing but result if condition is true if this condition is true then this will be the value otherwise this will be the value out of this expression now let's see how we can make use of this conditional operator in our design so here we have assign a this is nothing but g is a condition and this is a value when the condition is true and this is value and condition is false so what basically is happening here is whenever the condition is true a will get the value of x otherwise a will get the value of y let's see one another example assign a if increment equal to equal to 2 this is also will result in this is a condition which will result either true or, or false or here here actually this is a single bit value so here we have a expression if this results in true a will get a plus 1 otherwise a will get a minus 1. So if you see here this is nothing but similar to a multiplexer logic when select line is 1 multiplexer output get a value a if select output is 0 multiplexer output will get a value b. So this is nothing but similar condition or similar expression to a multiplexer logic. That's why when we synthesize this conditional operator, it will always return in a multiplexer circuit. So I hope this is clear. Now let's see the operator precedence. So we have loads of operator CS. If we have an expression or a Boolean equations and there are many operators present in that Boolean equations, how will we determine that which operator or which operation has, has to be performed first and which one is later? So the operator precedence becomes very important in that particular case and this is the table where the operator precedence is given from highest to lowest. So guys you can go through this table and you can see what is the operator precedence we have to use and here I will just point out few important points. The operators on the same level evaluates from left to right and it is strongly recommended to use the parenthesis to define order of precedence and improve the readability of the code. So it is always a best practice to use the parenthesis to encapsulate the particular operator in one big boolean equation so that it will be more easy from a readability perspective as well. So friends I hope the concepts covered here in operator module is clear. If you have any doubts, please write down in the comment section. Also, please do subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload the new video. Thank you very much.